Indifference is not an option. Only outspoken insistence that drug use will not be tolerated. Everyone is obligated to become hysterical at the mere thought of drug use, just as office workers in 1934 were obligated to scream curses like Pavlov's frothing dogs uh, when the enemy leader appeared on screen, and they'd better scream loud and scream ugly. I remember during the Mike Bell flap, uh, eyewitness news was going around prowling the streets, you know, sticking mics in everybody's face. Well, I think that making the money they do, they should be serving as an example. Now, she gets plenty of mic time. And here's a black cat working on some underground cables, straightens up and says, I think if someone uses drugs, it's his own biz. Boy, did they get that mic out of his face. He didn't even get the word out. Uh, freedom of the press to say what they want to hear and call it the voice of the people. Urine tests. Our pioneer ancestors would piss in their graves at the thought of urine tests to decide whether a man is competent to do his job. <laughs> the measure of competence is performance. When told that General Grant had a drinking problem, Lincoln said, find out what brand of whiskey he drinks and distribute it to the other generals. <laughs> Dr. Halstead, one of the great American surgeons who introduced antiseptic procedures at a time when surgeons, far from donning rubber gloves, did not even wash their hands. And the death rate from post-operative infections ran up to 80%. Well, he was a lifelong morphine addict, but he could still hack it and hack it good. And he lost no patience because of his personal habit. In those good old days, a man's personal habits were personal and private. Now even a citizen's blood and urine are subject to arbitrary seizure and search. Why the world's greatest detective could not have survived a urine test. Which is it this time, Holmes, cocaine, or morphine? Uh, Watson asks. <clears throat> It's rather disquieting to speculate what may lurk behind this colossal red herring of the war against drugs, a war neither likely nor designed to succeed. One thing is obvious, old clean money and new dirty money are shaking hands under the table. And the old tried and failed police approach will continue and escalate. In politics, if something doesn't work, that is the best reason to go on doing it. If something looks like it might work, stay well away. A thing like that could make waves. And the boys at the top, they don't like waves. Uh, Dead Souls, this sort of a film idea loosely suggested by a sci-fi book. Dead Souls postulates that the soul is an electromagnetic field designed to occupy and activate a certain organism. While infinitely less vulnerable than the artifact it occupies, the soul can be dispersed and destroyed by a nuclear blast. This is, in fact, the ultra-secret and super-sensitive function of the atomic bomb as a soul killer to alleviate an escalating soul glut stacked up like cordwood and non-recyclable by the old hellfire expedient like fucking plastics. 
Ruins of Hiroshima on screen. Pull back to show Robert Oppenheimer and the technician at a switchboard and Robert Oppenheimer flanked by middle-aged men with a cold, dead look of heavy power. The technician twiddles his knobs. All clear. Are you sure? The instruments say so. Opie says, thank God it wasn't a dud. Oh, uh, hurry up with those printouts, Joe. Yes, sir. He looks after them sourly. Thank Joe it wasn't a dud. God doesn't know what buttons to push. However, some tough young souls, uh, horribly maimed and very disgruntled, do to survive Hiroshima and come back to endanger national security. So the scientists are put to work to devise a super soul killer. No job too dirty for a fucking scientist. They start with animals and there are some laboratory accidents. Run for your lives, gentlemen. A purple ass baboon has survived 23 skadoo with the most savage animal on earth. The incandescent baboon soul rips through a steel door like wet paper. Yeah, we had to vaporize the insulation, lost expensive equipment and personnel. Irreplaceable, some of them, real soul food chefs. You might say cordon bleu. Well, trial and error, we now have soul killers that don't quit. State of the fart. Sure, the big part. We know how it's all going to end, the first sound and the last sound. Meanwhile, all personnel on planet Earth can find two quarters, a permanent party, you might say. Convince them they got no souls. It's more humane that way. Scientists always said there's no such thing as a soul. Now they're in a position to prove it. Total death, soul death, it's what the Egyptians call the second and final death. This awesome power to destroy souls forever is now vested in far-sighted and responsible men in the State Department, the CIA, and the Pentagon. The president, 500 feet down in solid rock, appears on television and gives the American people a finger. I got mine, fuck you, every crumb for himself. <laughs>